Welcome everyone to Young at Heart, nursery rhymes, children's poems, stories, and songs to keep us all young at heart, for that is my objective, and I am Father James DeLucio of the Paulist Fathers here in New York City. I'm delighted to be with you once again, this time for session number 37. I'm going to offer a reprise of a previous poem, a very short one, because since yesterday we were talking about boys and girls and rivalries and comparisons between boys and girls and sibling rivalry and men and women, I thought this poem needed a counterpart. So I have repeating for you Little Miss Muffet and one about a little boy who went into a barn. So we have a complete complementarity of the sexes, which is part of the challenge of this 21st century, don't you think? So, Little Miss Moffat sat on a toffet, eating her curds and whey, when along came a spider, and sat down beside her, and frightened Miss Muffet away. Now, there was a little boy who went into a barn and lay down on some hay. An owl came out and flew all about and frightened the poor boy away. <laughs> well, now let's get to a more serious matter. Little Bo Peep, who lost her sheep. Now, this is an interesting nursery rhyme because everybody knows the first stanza, but there are five stanzas, and most people are quite ignorant of that reality. It's like the Star-Spangled Banner, the national anthem. Everybody knows the first verse. Hardly anybody knows the second, and there might even be a third for that matter. But for your edification, a good vocabulary word, let us now explore the entirety of Little Bo Peep. No more abridged versions for us. We want the complete rhyme, don't we? Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and can't tell where to find them. Oh, leave them alone, and they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. Little Bo Peep, she fell asleep, and dreamt she heard them bleating. But when she awoke, she found it a joke, for they were still all fleeting. Then up she took her little crook, determined for to find them. She found them indeed, but it made her heart bleed, for they'd left all their tails behind them. It happened one day as Bo Peep did stray into a meadow hard by. There she espied their tails side by side, all hung on a tree to dry. She heaved a sigh, oh, and wiped her eye. And over the hill hocks went rambling, no, and over the hill hocks went rambling, and tried what she could as a shepherdess would to tack again each to its lambkin. There you go. Ramblin' has to rhyme with lambkin, so we can't say rambling. The things we learn in sharing nursery rhymes with one another. I have one more for our conclusion about the good use of time. This one goes back to 1639. Many people think that Benjamin Franklin made this quote, that he discovered it or articulated it for the first time. Not true. This goes farther back in time to none other than Mother Goose. The cock crows in the morn 
to tell us to rise, and he that lies late will never be wise, for early to bed and early to rise is the way to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. There we go. Now, like so many poems and great works of literature, this one contains what we call a half-truth. Yes, alas, wealth is no guarantee in any case in this world of ours, but good health and wisdom, many can achieve that, and that can come from regular hours of bedtime and rising. I'm not very good at that myself. How are you? Depending, I suppose, on our age and our work schedules. Some people have to work nights and then suddenly have to work days. And it's just not good for a human being to do that. I think especially of our medical workers whom we're praying for now, all the doctors and nurses and health aides and the maintenance people in the hospitals. But it's also true for hundreds of different vocations, policemen, firemen, uh, we're indebted to so many who allow their whole being to be disrupted to serve us, waking up at different times from one week to the next as the uh, occasion arises, as their employers schedule them, not always fully with consideration, we might add, but nevertheless. So let's close with a little prayer for everyone who's working hard to keep us healthy, to keep us safe, who are attending to the people who are sick, who are helping outside the hospitals and the medical community to just keep things humming and to be there to help us. Policemen, firemen, the uh, Department of Public Works picking up our garbage. Thank you so much. What a terrible thing if our garbage wasn't picked up regularly and people who take care of the park so we can go for our walk at least six feet apart from the next person. Uh, But there are many people, the people who work in grocery stores and the pharmacists and drugstores who are helping keep life going at its most basic level. These are essentials. And I hope we're developing and cultivating really a thankful heart for gratitude is the heart of prayer, the part, a heart of the heart of wisdom, and at the center of a good life. So, God, we understand you in many ways, but we thank you for upholding life and offering us love. And we ask your blessing upon all the people that we were just re- reflecting upon, and how we are indebted to them, how they help their neighbor, which is one of the great gifts and laws that you have given us, to love ourselves, to love our neighbors, all because of love for you. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Have a good evening, stay healthy, keep safe, and God bless you all. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Bye.